All right. Good morning, traders. Good morning, fellow privateers. I'm. Uh, we're doing this video today um, on Labor Day. Yes, I'm celebrating Labor Day in the office because the, the, there's stuff going on, and you know we don't we take we we take time off when there's markets are quiet, and themes are hard to come by. So. Now I'm 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 doing this on uh, the trading view. We'll see if it how it comes out. But anyhow, um, here's the British pound. So the shit is hitting the fan like majorly. One, two, three, four down bars. We went from one twenty one eighty down to one twenty sixty or so. Expect call for general election if the government loses a vote on Tuesday. There will be a vote on general election if defeated tomorrow. Um, it just it's nothing good, and I'm telling you, <laughs> I know it's you know this might sound crazy, but if this 120 level breaks, you see this horizontal line here. If 120 breaks, I I really do think that we can take out all those old lows that we saw, like flash crash lows and uh, you know the Brexit lows and everything else. <coughs> If we go here on trading view, they've got what we call it a 119 the figure. It, it, it's not even a stop there. It, I honestly think this British pound can and probably will trade somewhere between 110 and 115 in the next couple months. So, regardless of the outcome with, with Brexit. So, you know, it's hard to sell it down here. You know, it's been under a lot of pressure short term and probably not going to do anything with it but but definitely um, definitely keep it on it as far as last week the the weakest currencies were, uh, were the euro dollar and Kiwi so here's a euro dollar daily I don't know what this line is let's get rid of that um, go back at a weekly. We are making two year lows. So we got to get all the way back here. <clears throat> this is actually a really good chart. So it shows the Fibonacci's. 108.57 is the next support. We'll, we'll, we'll go there for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, you know, we've taken out all these old lows and there's really nothing there's really no support until this 10860 I think we'll probably get a bounce out of there but um, uh, you know we're, we're selling rallies in euro um, so it's making two years lows uh, Kiwi similar type thing I have to I mean I gotta get rid of the Fibos this thing is a absolute train wreck and I've missed it and I'm not happy but there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to take out 62 cents. I'm going to take it out in the next couple of weeks. And I think the targets are like 58, 56, like handles that we have not seen. And I mean, let's just, let's go to a monthly. I mean, you want to talk about old school levels. Here, let's do let's do a little exercise here. Here's a monthly. We get the Fibos. So 2008, obviously, you know, probably half of you weren't even in the in the market at that point. Double top, perfect double top. Back in 11, 14. Up at 88 cents. You can see here we have now, in August, we took out the two thirds Fib, which was 64 ish. So the next target here is 58. That's what that's what I was talking about. That was even before I drew the Fib. So it's going to 58 cents. Find a place to sell it. Um, I feel like I've been missing this, but. 
we find. Here's dollar cad daily. Let's look at the daily. We talked about this. All these fractals up here, all these old highs. Got the stops today. And then close down here. Until we get a daily close over this two-thirds fib. 133. Call like I want to see like a 133.70 close. I can't buy it. Um Let's take a look at the dollar index. Uh, what was I looking at? Dollar index, new high daily close. It, it, last week it put in a new high daily close for this move and a new high weekly close. Here's the weekly close right here. We're higher actually today. And then the daily close, same deal. This was Friday. Let's close. So it's a new high daily close. You, 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 we don't we don't sell new high daily and weekly closes. Just one of our rules. Uh, Urien looks just awful. Um, it's really really oversold. There's some demark buy signals on the daily or on the weeklies. I think. Um, not sure what to do with this one. You know, here we are. We're under the flash crash from the start of the year. Uh, Dollar China is making new highs, I believe. Uh, I think I just saw something there. Yes, there it is. Let's go to the daily. New highs. Let's move. The tariffs are intact. They started yesterday. How about Euro Aussie? Got this one kind of wrong. Or is that a false break? Here's this green box. I have to extend. I'll fix that later. Um, we've been, you know, kind of in this range. You know, that for us is a, uh, you know, higher your Aussie is a, a risk off and lower your Aussie is a risk on. So, Dollar Turkey had an interesting week. Remember, we talked about this last Sunday. Um, Let's take a look at the week. So we have this spike right in the Asian Open when the Turkey Yen stops are going through. And uh, that high is wrong, by the way. That's weird. Maybe it's not. Hmm. Anyhow, kind of consolidating. If we go over to some of the equity indices, um, the S&Ps, had their first up week in five. Powerful week. We had that, you know, that big sell off on Sunday on the open. I was actually a little lucky. I, I picked some up around 28.15 in the futures, which was a, just purely a hedge for uh, some downside, some puts that I own. <clears throat> and it, you know, kind of paid for the premium. Um, the Buns had a doji week. Uh, where's the bun? Here it is. So you can see here, we've been playing this short fixed income now for the past week or so. It's It hasn't really worked, but it hasn't gone against us. So I'm kind of sticking with it. Um, let's see here. We have this. Doji right here. Um, it's a Doji week. You know, if you go to the U.S., 10-year yields. So that was the Bund future. 10-year uh, yields, I don't know. I mean, it bounced. I wouldn't say that's necessarily a uh, higher yield, you know, signal. Or we got these trades on. Um The DAX actually, I think the DAX had a pretty big week. Yeah. So here's the DAX. That's last week. This bar right here, new low. We didn't take out this low, but new low. And we closed well above the previous week's high. So you know we're we're definitely leaning toward kind of a risk on feel. Um, Bamels bull bear. Indicator, they get a buy signal on Friday. 
it's been a really good signal and there's a lot of people in the market that follow this so we we're kind of going with it so it's you know they expect the equity markets to rally um, bond yields to rally over the next month or so and they you know we could see a 50 basis point rally in US 10-year yields you know let's take a look at the chart we'll go to the daily um, this thing that was our break but if we just go to this old what is that the July high I think you know, this old July high that was up here at 215 and you know the market's losing momentum down here got down to 144 you know 50 basis points from here is all the way up to this three-quarter FIBO. You know, I'm not going to get that excited. That seems like a big move to me. But can we get, can we go up 20 basis points to 170 or even to 180, 180, 190? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, so we're playing, uh, we're playing, you know, risk on right now. Uh, we've got some gold shorts, which are kind of starting to work. For me, here's a 15-day moving average. We get under 15.17, which is also that daily low. And then I think more importantly is this. Let's draw. Let's draw that line. This is the break trade right here, right there. A 14.90. We'll call it. Um, we're trying to stay short. I have no problem with this position. Being short and stopping out over the you know the highs of this move, um, we've had to, some demark indicators telling us that um, gold is overdone. Um, what else are we looking at? That's TLT. That's kind of the you know, that's the ETF that didn't trade today. It was Friday's par. Got a couple fractals here, so. We're definitely uh, we're definitely leaning risk on. The dollar looks like it wants to break out. That's gonna be that, that is having the dollar rally generally should be risk off. Um, you know, but it's rallying against certain pairs, and the DXY looks like it. You know, looks like it could go back above one hundred. So we're trying to pick our spots. Here's dollar yen. We didn't talk about that. It's kind of nowheresville. I would, I would, really can't do anything with this. Um, just a range. Just 109.30, 104.47. My guess, if the dollar continues to strengthen, dollar yen actually will catch a bit. I, you know, we're definitely. Um, liking to buy dips and risk right now so anyhow i think my video is running out um what do we have for hold on a second i've got the week ahead just in in economic data we've got um some four ecb speakers coming out mersh lauchnager we knows care um uh, aussie retail sales coming up here shortly um South African second quarter GDP is out as well. While the U.S. and Canada catch up with manufacturing PMI, we got ISM coming out. Manufacturing um, Wednesday is a the services PMI out of uh, Australia, Japan, China, Europe. Uh, retail sales are out in Canada and Europe, and then we got the Bank of Canada, which is the the um, well, we got the RBA tonight in a couple hours' time, and then Bank of Canada tomorrow, and Rick's Bank on on uh, Thursday. So, you know, it's kind of the start of this. We we've talked about this, um, you know, twenty ish central bank meetings in the month of September, uh, and then kind of to wrap up the week, we have um, you 
GDP, EU or employment numbers, <coughs> and then uh, Canada and U.S. jobs numbers. So, should be a busy week. The holiday is officially over, as far as I'm concerned. I'm in the saddle. I'm ready to go. I'm going to go do my chart work, and uh, you'll hear from us on the European Open tomorrow. All the best. Cheers.